Hi guys, it's Natalie. Today we're going to be talking about the phrase, preserve the core, stimulate progress, and how that applies to your ministry. Now, what is your core? In previous video essays, we have talked about how identifying your core ideology begins to answer the questions as to why your ministry and organization exists in the first place and how knowing that question, you can recruit a powerhouse team that is so excited about going out on this mission in order to change lives and change eternities. Knowing your core values, knowing and identifying the group of people you serve, also known as a target market, your mission and your vision builds a solid foundation for your ministry that launches, in fact, can propel you forward in order to do very effective world-changing work. Now, here's the thing about this foundation. It is so crucial and it is so important that researchers who study organizational strategy say that this core ideology does not change. This core ideology is so essential to your organizational structure as a ministry that if you were to change the answers to those questions, you would actually change the very essence of the ministry itself. But Here's the fun thing, because you are so grounded in those foundational principles and knowledge of what the ministry is, that even though those things do not change, you are actually better positioned to be able to take advantage of cutting edge practices and strategies and technology in order to further the mission of the ministry itself. And that is because you are no longer defined by your practices or strategies. You are defined by the mission. Similar things happen in the real world when structures and foundations are put into place. Take music, for instance. Music has many foundational principles or rules. For instance, using pitch, tempo, the correct key. These things are important to the creation of something beautiful. And although some people might say that rules are restrictive, like, I want to break the rules, I'm going to be free, do my own thing. Listen to what happens when somebody breaks the foundational rules of music. Those musicians who you just painfully heard left the foundational essence of music and the result was painful. It actually hurts. They didn't create anything beautiful. Quite the opposite, in fact. That's because they left the foundational heart of music and because of it, it severely limited and restricted their ability to make music. In contrast, when somebody embraces that foundation of music, those foundational rules, they are able to give way to an even greater expression and variety of creativity and music. Just think of the many different types of music that exist out there, whether it's jazz or rock and roll or classical or opera. There's so many different ways to Thing. The fact that they're actually embracing the rules gives rise to a greater expression and creativity than would be possible if somebody had claimed freedom and have moved beyond the very essence of what makes music what it is. You can actually see the same thing at work in the Catholic Church. We have been rooted in the same truth that has been taught for the past 2,000 years. But if you look in those 2,000 years, you can see an incredible expression and variety of the ways that people have encountered God. But they all go back to that same truth, 
whether it's religious orders like the Franciscans or the Dominicans or the Carmelites or the Jesuits or the many different lay movements that you can see popping up all over the place, that these things are different expressions of the same truth and it's beautiful and you can see how that looks exactly like music that people go back to the heart to the truth that is music and it gives way to a huge variety of expressions and creativity same thing in the church and the same thing in your ministry when you prayerfully discern the foundation and the core the very essence of your ministry it will give rise to a variety of different expressions and beautiful ways in which you can follow and accomplish the mission that God has given to you let me give you an example Let's say that God has put it on your heart to minister to homeless teens. And your mission is to not only lead these teens into discipleship, but you also want to create a safe environment where they can grow and develop the skills that they need in order to become contributing members of society. Now, I can think of at least three ministries, both Protestant and Catholic, that identified that mission and identified their core values. But the way that they are ministering to vulnerable teenagers looks really different. For instance, here in Grants Pass, we have Hearts with a Home, which actually is a homeless shelter for teenagers, giving them that safe environment where they can get out of being trafficked, where maybe they can get out of homes that where there's a lot of violence or angst and it gives them a safe place to get back on their feet in contrast to joe's place and these guys do not provide a shelter instead they go to where the teens are and they provide meals and they provide foods and it's different from the food kitchen because the teens come to Joe's place instead where they interact with their peers, where they meet adults and form healthy relationships with them that encourage them to start taking the steps that they need in order to live, live healthier lives. As opposed to like dirty vagabond ministries where they go into the heart of like urban or really depressed areas in order to meet teens where they are also to give them a safe environment. These are all different ministries that are ministering to homeless or vulnerable youth and they're doing amazing work, even though technically they share a common mission or vision. It's just an example of some of the variety that God is going to call different ministries to. All of those ministries share a pretty common mission, but they're expressing it in a variety of different ways, which is fantastic. God is working through them in order to reach his teenagers through a variety of different methods. It's beautiful. The same thing can happen for the ministry God has called you to serve when you prayerfully discern your core ideology because then you and your team remain grounded and foundation in that foundational truth of what the ministry is and who it is serving. And it means that your team is going to be able to go out and be able to implement cutting edge practices and strategies in order to more effectively engage the culture and to be able to bear great fruit in the lives and the eternities of the people that you have been called to serve. And you're not going to be stuck in one program. You're not going to be stuck in one event. You're not going to be stuck in one strategy because the strategies and practices of the ministry do not define you. The mission defines you. That's what it means to preserve the core and stimulate progress. And that is how it makes a huge impact in your ministry. This concept is so important that we're going to continue exploring and talking about it in upcoming video essays. But here's the thing. Do you feel like the ministry in which you're serving is married to practices and strategies or married to a core ideology? Why or why not? In the meantime, like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, know that I'm praying for you, and thank you for everything that you're doing. See you next week.